Hey guys, welcome back to my video tutorial series. This is uh, lab one, part two. Here we're gonna be configuring that SOPOS that we installed in the previous lab, and we're gonna be installing a uh, virtual machine to essentially, essentially, man essentially, essentially manage our uh, server roles. So let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna create a new virtual machine. We're gonna call it lab and GMT1. All right. I'm going to give it. I'm going to make it a generation two virtual machine since since this is going to be Windows Server 2012. And again, you can download that for free in my uh, blog. I have a link to the Microsoft page where you can download that. I'm going to give it two gigs of RAM, uh, not dynamic. I'm going to connect it to the lab LAN, the switch that we created. I'm going to give it 30 gigs of RAM, of uh, disk space, and I'm going to install. Uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. Just going through the uh, notes here that I wrote, and uh, let's go ahead and just select Next, Install. And my installer is slightly different than the one that you're going to download off the the internet, but this is essentially installing uh, Server 2012 R2 standard. I'm um, just selecting, you know, basic installation on my drive. So I'm going to pause the video while we wait for Windows to install. All right, it looks like Windows just finished installing. Uh, sometimes, if you're using Hyper-V, you might see this where the thumbnail actually has stuff but the screen is black it's some sort of hyper-v bug so just close the uh, console session and reopen it and it comes back so server 2012 just finished installing i'm going to go ahead and create the local administrator account and of course great finally third third time the trick or whatever they say um, let's go ahead and log in Now uh, we're going to get a error with our network since we do not have DHCP yet on our lab at all. So it's going to give us a 169 address. Now remember that we created the firewall with a 192.168.2.1 address. So let's go ahead and give this a IP address of 192.168.2.2. And I'm going to give it the gateway address is .2.1 and DNS will just be Google for now. Okay. Oh, oops, that's okay. Uh, now that we're on the network, we should be able to go ahead and pull up a web browser. And uh, my build of 2012 already has a few things built in for me. Uh, you can use I Internet Explorer. And so remember, we're going to go to one uh, HTTPS 192.168.2.1 4444. Just wait for it to load for a little bit, and it's going to give us a certificate error. We're just going to go ahead and accept that. I apologize. Getting a couple of emails on my phone here. All right, great. Uh, now that we're on the basic setup uh, page, you can follow along on my blog, or you'll just see what I'll do here real quick. I'm going to give it a host name of lab. Lab, the city is lab. And we're going to give it an admin password. Go ahead and try not to forget this. This is going to be important. Uh, whatever. None of that really matters. So the only thing that really matters here is the admin password. And admin is going to be the username. Okay, go ahead and check the box and perform the basic system setup. This is going to take approximately uh, a minute or so. It tells you 40 seconds. So just go ahead and wait. All right, after the time has passed, you're going to see that it's going to like reset the connection. So we're going to just, you know, proceed. And you're going to log in as admin with the password that you just created. And now we're going to continue the setup. Uh, continue. 
I don't have a license file. However, if you register for a Sophos account, uh, you can create a free account and you can download a free license uh, to use at home. Uh, right now, I will not be specifying that and I will be using a, the, the free 30-day trial. You can see that uh, the internal network is 192.168.2.1 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0. You can enable DHCP so that the firewall gives out an IP address. I will not be doing that. I will have Windows Server doing that. We're going to create the WAN connection so that the virtual machines on this internal network are still able to access the internet. Uh, you can see that there is an extra interface, EF1, that's actually the virtual machine's second, oops, sorry, wrong virtual machine. Since we're looking at the firewall, that's this one, okay? So we're going to select that, it's the only one there. The interface uplink type is a standard Ethernet interface over DHCP because my home network has DHCP, so we're just going to leave it like that. Let's select next. Uh, allowed services is essentially asking us to set up a uh, basic setup for a firewall. I'm going to go ahead and enable web, FTP, terminal services, and DNS. And I'm going to make sure that the UTM responds to ping for, uh, for testing services. We will be creating a basic firewall rule that disables the firewall, but when that firewall off rule is not enabled, we still want web, DNS, and some other things to work. Let's go ahead and select next. It's going to ask us to enable some advanced threat protection settings. I will not be enabling these because I don't need them running since this is just a lab and uh, those use resources. Okay. Web protection settings. I also don't need to block access to any of these um, web pages and I don't need to scan websites for viruses. Again, this is just a lab. Email protection, whatever. It's going to give us a basic thank you and a, an overview. We're just going to select finish. And that's going to bring us to this uh, page. That's good. So now we're going to go ahead and open up the command prompt and we're going to just ping. Man. Ping 8.8.8.8. Now that we've configured the firewall, you would imagine this works, right? But as you can see, uh, it's failing. The reason for that is because the firewall is currently blocking ping. So let's go ahead and uh, create that firewall rule to allow everything. You could view the settings here, but let's go ahead and do them together. So we're going to select, um, I believe it's under networks, uh, nope, network protection, firewall. We're going to create a new rule. We're going to put it to the top. We're going to source will be any services will be any, destinations will be any, action allow, and I'm going to give it a comment called firewall off. Save. Okay, you can see that the rule is at the top and it's disabled. So let's go ahead and ping Google again. You're going to see that it's failing. Great, let's go ahead and enable that firewall rule. And you can see that now we're getting reply. So that means our internal network is able to access the internet. And we can even test some external websites. Uh, there you go. And we should be able to access. There you go. You can see the autocomplete's already working. So there you go. Our internal network has access to the internet. It's looking great. Uh, we have a basic firewall configured. And we're on a uh, cool little network here. All right, so thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we'll be uh, setting up Active Directory.